G'day, g'day, I'm Chase of Langer AX, and today we're going to be reacting to Someone in This Photo Has an Evil Secret by my favourite true crime channel, Mr. Ballin. Uh, we've done a bunch of reactions to Mr. Ballin's content. There is a playlist in the playlists section of my channel uh, just called Mr. Ballin Reactions, which has all the videos in them if you would like to check it out. And before the video starts, congratulations to Mr. Ballin on five million subscribers. Well deserved. He hasn't even been doing YouTube that long. I don't think, but yeah, five mil. So congratulations, uh, all the best in the future because he has actually seen one of these reaction videos, which I will never not mention because it's awesome. Um, but if you are new here, make sure you subscribe because over 80% of the people who watch my videos are not actually subscribed. So if you are not, check if you are. And if you're not, make sure you do and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a video from me. Leave a like on this video if you end up enjoying this reaction. And if you have a suggestion for a particular channel or video, then drop it in the comment section below because I do read every single comment and just comment your thoughts on the case that we'll be covering today and just the video itself okay someone in this photo has an evil secret mr ballin let's go fair warning the ending to this story is very abrupt and very upsetting but before we oh. get into it well it's just in mr ballin fashion then because oh especially i still still can't get over this psycho inspired scream i just nah Mm. Today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, dark and mysterious, mysterious delivered in story <laughs> format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload once that's or twice we every week. So if that's of interest to you, please offer to curl the like button's hair for their wedding, <laughs> but then repeatedly touch the top of their ear with the curling iron. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss uh, any of our weekly uploads. <laughs> I love how he just says it so seriously as well. He just doesn't break character when he says these funny little blurbs about the like button. Ah. He's the only channel that does that. I love it so much. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's story. I love this music. I've missed Mr. Ballin. Oh, I'm never disappointed with this channel, man. Strongsville, Ohio used to be mm. just another typical quiet American suburb. Nice homes, nice families, nice restaurants, and a mall. But in late 2017, a discovery was made in Strongsville that put this town on the map in the worst way possible. To understand this discovery, we need to go back to early 2016 when this town's nightmare began. In mm. early 2016, two Ohio is like in Pennsylvania, I believe, are the states with like Amish, right? Don't they have Amish? I'm going to sneeze again soon. Um. <laughs> two longtime Strongsville residents, Bruce and Melinda Pleskovic, received some. Poliskovic? That sounds like Eastern European, damn. Maybe, who knows? Two longtime Strongsville residents, Bruce and Melinda Pleskovic, received some very exciting news. Their 20 year old daughter named Anna and her 20 year old fiance named Jeff had just told them they were expecting a baby, a baby girl. Aww. And so Bruce and Melinda were totally excited about the prospect of finally becoming grandparents. But at the same time. That's young to have. Is it just me? I don't know. I don't want to have a kid until I'm like at least 25, like minimum. Um, but you know, if they're financially and emotionally supportive of this soon-to-be kid, then go all for it. They knew. As long as it's not like 18. Who <laughs> Anna and Jeff did not have very much money. Anna still lived Ooh, at home yeah, with nah. Bruce and Melinda. She oh, did mm -mm, no, 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 no. Do not have a child. No, no, no. You need to have a place to stay. You need to be able to financially and emotionally support it. Like, I'm very big on having a kid at the right time and not just like, I want a mini-me. You know, you really need to think about it. So this will cause financial and emotional stress on everyone involved F did not have very much and that might lead to this crime case so who knows i don't know much money still anna watching. still lived at home with bruce and melinda she did have a job but she made very little money she yeah, was a waitress no, a at a local applebee's restaurant mm. and as for jeff he had a better job working as a service technician for a heating and air company mm -hmm. but he didn't have enough money to support him and anna yeah in no. fact he didn't even have enough money to move out of his parents home he was still living uh, with them yeah on... if, if you're both living with your parents do not have a child trust me just don't I'm not speaking from experience i'm 17 but <laughs> <laughs> it's just it, just wait wait till you're in a better position the other side of strongsville and so this couple they're really excited about their baby but bruce and melinda are thinking you know we really got to find a way to support them because they're just not prepared for this first child and so thank you 
Thank you. So Bruce and Melinda, they talked it over, and they decided the best way to support this young couple was to tell their daughter if she wanted to, she could invite Jeff to come stay at their house. Wow. That way, the two of them could be together, and once they had their daughter, Bruce and Melinda could be the great grandparents and help take care of the baby. And in general, this would allow the couple to just continue to save money and Damn. move out when they nice were ready. Parents, and so、man. when they told Anna they were willing to do this, Anna was so happy. She was so grateful. She called Jeff, and Jeff was equally happy and grateful, and said, "Yes, I would love to move in with you guys." So it、mm-hmm. took several months, but finally, in June of 2016, which was the same month that Jeff and Anna welcomed their daughter to the world, Jeff would leave his parents' home. And- I love that eerie music uses the. It's very eerie. Jeff and Anna welcomed their daughter to the world. Jeff would leave his parents' home and move into Bruce and Melinda's home. And almost immediately after he moved in, he and the rest of Anna's family began experiencing some very strange and disturbing things around their property. Just a few days after Jeff had moved in, he and Anna were home alone. They were on the main floor of the house and they were having dinner at the kitchen table. And at some point, Jeff just happened to glance out one of the back windows that looked out into their backyard. And now this property had this. Huge sprawling backyard. Basically, they had all these houses kind of in a row, and they all had almost like a communal backyard, this big open space. And so Jeff is looking out into this huge backyard, and he sees off in the distance something strange. He doesn't really know what he's looking at because it's nighttime, it's dark. But he stands up and he walks over to the window, and as he's looking out, he sees way off on the backside of their property. Oh, chapter. Are these four strangers just standing there, appearing to be smoking something, and they're just kind of looking up at the Pleskovic house? And so Jeff is looking、Damn. out the window. Those sound effects make it so much better. The. <laughs> and they're just kind of looking up at the Pleskovic house, and so Jeff is looking out the window at these four, not really sure what to make of them. And he calls Anna over, and so Anna walks over,、hmm. and the two of them are looking out, not really sure what to do. I mean, on the one hand, these four people who they clearly didn't know or they believed they didn't know were definitely trespassing. But at the same time, they weren't really doing anything. They were just kind of standing、mm. there smoking. But、mm. as they're watching, could be preparing to do something though. People, one of them begins walking up the property towards their home, and then stops alongside the Pleskovic trampoline, which was in their backyard. And this person、oh, begins. I miss having a trampoline, man. That kid's gonna have a good childhood if they have a trampoline. <laughs> Endless joy. Fiddling with the trampoline, and so at this, Anna's like, you Wait, know no what?、Touch. I don't know what they're doing. I feel totally uncomfortable. Get your gun.、And、so Anna would actually. Call the police, and so the police they come <laughs> out. But by、do. the time the squad car arrived in front of the Pleskovic house, the four people in back must have seen the car, and they took off running. And so when the police officer went in the backyard and looked around. There was no one there, and there was、mm. also no sign they were there. There was no dropped cigarette butts or anything. They just kind of vanished. And so the police officer told Jeff and Anna, "Yeah, well, they could have just taken them with them. If they come back, you know, let us know." It doesn't make sense to leave any evidence that could trace you to it, but you know, maybe they were ghosts. I don't really believe in ghosts or anything like that, but who knows? Maybe they gave birth to a bloody psychic. Uh, heebie-jeebie, baby. So the officer <laughs> left, and then a little while later, when Bruce and Melinda came home, Jeff and Anna would tell them about what happened, and they would agree that that was totally strange. That in、mm. all the decades they had lived in Strongsville, they had never had anybody stroll、cool、onto their property. Strongsville. <laughs> Saying this is where big strongmen live.、Um, that is weird, though. That is a strange thing. You don't really just trespass onto someone's property to just smoke and then leave. Like maybe they were planning something. I mean, they were approaching. So maybe they were interrupted,、uh, or maybe they、uh, just noticed this new baby and were like, "Oh, this family could be vulnerable. They're, you know, going through a maybe stressful time, but just a a lot is going on in their life right now. Let's let's do something about that." Property and just loiter in the middle of the night, and so for the next couple of days, the family was definitely on edge. But after a little while, this whole incident was largely forgotten about. Fast forward、mm. about five months to November 2016. Man, that's a huge gap. Okay. 
And Damn. Anna was home alone with her young daughter, and she's playing with her daughter on the first floor of the house towards the front of the house. Mm-hmm. And as she's playing with her daughter, she suddenly hears what sounds like someone trying to open the back sliding glass door oh. on the back of the house. Oh. And so- Good sound effects again. I've missed Mr. Ball and Man. And if you haven't, make sure you like this video uh, because it helps the channel so much and you are supporting me directly. So I appreciate a like. But man, I've missed Mr. Ball and and oh, I'm sorry. That chapter is good, but Mr. Ball and I, I like his voice better. I think he tells a story better and he uses more sound effects and it's more airy. It fits the mood better. Whereas that chapter mixes in comedy, which isn't a bad thing, but it kind of takes me out of the mood and, and the mindset. Whereas, you know, Mr. Bullen never like, breaks character or anything. That chapter is good, but I prefer Mr. Bullen and... You know, everyone loves Mr. Bullen. <laughs> How can Someone you trying to open the back sliding glass door on the back of the house. And so instinctively, Anna thinks, okay, you know, Jeff must be out there or my parents must be out there and they don't have a key or something. And so she scoops up her daughter. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you could think that, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe. And she begins walking towards the back of the house. But you could have texted Anna and say, like, I know it's probably, it's definitely not one of them, but they could have said, like, hey, Anna, I don't have a key. Can you let me in? Or, hey, it's locked. Because usually, or you just knock, you know, just opening a door with no, you know, sign of making your presence known it's a little strange we open the store for them and when she walks into one of the back rooms before she reaches the back door she happens to look out one of the windows that don't, looked don't, out oh. into the backyard and standing right up against the glass is this unknown male figure Ugh. with his face pressed up against Ugh. the glass Ugh. and so anna just freezes and stares at this guy and then this guy he notices anna and he ducks down out of view and now anna's thinking to herself this yeah, is the guy he must know. have been trying to break in my back door i'm home alone i don't know what's going on here that could be that means two things <laughs> this is the guy he must have been trying to break in my back door i'm home alone i don't know what's uh, going on here child. i don't know if he's going to try to I'm break in again and so she just turns mm. and runs and her motherly instincts are going to be kicking in she has her baby in her arms and that's like priority obviously i can't speak i'm not a mom nor a woman nor can feel that motherly instinct um but you know it's going to be like fight or flight usually adrenaline pumping heart racing you know it's going to she wants to defend that baby at all costs. Maybe it hasn't kicked in yet, but she knows there is a, a current threat in the situation she's in. Back towards the front of the house, she runs upstairs, she goes in a bedroom, she locks the door, and she calls the police. But by the Damn, time the smart. police come out there nice. and they look around, they can't find this unknown figure that was at the back of the house, mm. and there's no sign of an attempted forced entry. And so unfortunately, they told her, Interrupted look, you know, again. I'm sure this was very true. But are these connected? Because a five months, a five-month gap four people smoking and then one comes back maybe one could have been a few others scouting around the house but a five months break is a little strange unless they were observing the house and the family's routine from afar and didn't get spotted so it's don't know whether con- whether to connect these two uh, incidents <coughs> incidents or not dramatic for you but there's really nothing we can do here there's no evidence to suggest mm-hmm. who did and that's this. the thing with cops and like especially online stuff which people call the cops on uh, and, you know, if nothing happened and they're gone, like no one broke in or someone's just been creepy, like realistically, the police can't do anything unless they just say, hey, stop being creepy, bro. It's not nice. And so please just, you know, keep your house locked. And if you see anybody suspicious on your property, call us back. And so naturally, after the police left and Anna had a chance to contact Jeff and her parents, they were horrified and they rushed home to comfort her. And then after the initial shock of this incident had worn off, the family began to speculate, you know, do you think this might be connected to those four strangers we saw on our property a few months ago? Mm. It just seems odd that those two... Yeah, but a few is still five. It's five months. I don't. I guess you could connect it, but maybe there were multiple, and she just happened to see one that was peering in. Things would happen so close together. Because who knows? There could have been one at the front door, one at climbing into a window, one, you know, looking through a different window, or they could have just been around him. You know, you don't know if it was just one or four. And then the family began to think, okay, well then, who is this person? Who are these people? What do they want? Why are they targeting us? It's What's going on? Because as it was, Girl. the Pleskovic family, they didn't have any That's enemies. such a cool last name, Pleskovic. At least none that they knew of. Vladimir. If anything, the people of Strongsville adored this family, especially Melinda, the mother. For the past 20 plus years, she had been a middle school teacher in town, and her Aww. students adored her. She was also a big time soccer coach in the community hey. because she had played in college. 
college, and she was still very passionate about it. So she was this amazing coach, and oh, in the well, eyes awesome. of many parents in the Man U fan, if you didn't know, the Strongsville community, <laughs> Melinda was a bit of an inspiration because she mm. was not only the mother to Anna, she was also the mother of an 18-year-old boy named Kyle who had Down syndrome and was nonverbal. And Melinda uh, just had this wow. unbelievable way with him, where she was so good to him. She incorporated him in everything. She got him so wow. involved. She gave him the best life he could possibly have. Damn, so she's love to her family, the community, her students, everyone. Like, please don't die, Melinda. Please. Oh, that's going to break my heart if she does. And so anytime you saw Kyle with his mother, Kyle would be all smiles. Even though Kyle oh. couldn't speak, it was so obvious his mother made him incredibly happy. But And the thing with uh, people who are mute or Down syndrome or can't verbalize their emotions, like they still know what's going on. They just can't verbalize something. And that would be awful. Imagine being in a situation where you know what's going on, you know what people are saying about you, you can hear and see them, depending on if you're blind or deaf or not, but, um, you know, this guy clearly isn't. You can't verbalize your emotions, you can't speak, you know, but you know what's going on, you're not dumb, you know, so, I don't know, that would be awful, and props to Melinda for taking care of him, that's awesome. Regardless of the reason for... Well, it's his kid, so it's her kid, so you're going to take care of him very well. ...these you know. strangers to be lurking around their property, the Pleskovic family was now totally on edge and found mm. themselves constantly looking out the windows, especially at night, in fear these strangers were There's going to come back and might try to break in again. And unfortunately, these strangers would come back. In January of 2017... Oh. Well, so this is eight months from the... Original so incident? two months after Anna oh, saw that then. unknown figure at the window and heard the back door sliding around, Bruce's car was broken into. It was sitting in the driveway of their... But you got to think, like, if there are people who are quite pessimistic in general, see a positive family that everyone loves, the community, the family, friends, everyone, they can grow envious and look in from an outside view and saying, why don't we have that? Let's turn everything upside down. You know, some people like that in the world just exist, but... You know, this is Ohio, isn't that like relatively conservative? I don't know, it doesn't really matter, but they should have a gun, right? Property, Most American families do, I believe. And stole Could be laptop. wrong though. Let me know, Americans, if you have a gun. <laughs> and so Bruce, he calls the police and he says, you know, I've got to believe this has to do with the people that are harassing my family. And the police believed him and they began mm. looking around and asking around, but... And if they're well loved in the community, especially Strongsville, then, you know, the police will be on them and they'll, they'll remember their case and make sure to almost prioritize it if they're you know well liked and and their whole community and known they could never track down the <coughs> laptop or the thief and so once again the family was That's kind of dog. left on their own and the police said look you know if you see anything else let us know but mm -hmm. there's not much we can do here a few months later in july of that year anna jeff oh, man. and her daughter were all home together one night so that's another June, so five months, four to five months later. So this is a very delayed attack. <laughs> when Anna to happened to look out one of the back windows on their first floor and out on the very back of the property were three strangers just standing in that Ugh, same spot so eerie, where they bro. saw those four strangers smoking the year before. And these three strangers are just standing there looking up at the house. Again, at the moment, I know that this will escalate, but at the moment, it could be perceived as a prank. Like, these kids, they could be, like, teenagers, right? Um, just trying to creep this family out because they're well-liked in the community and very well-known. Uh, so, you know, it could be a really cruel, sick prank, but I don't think it is. And so horrified, Anna calls out to Jeff and says, look, there are three people in the back of our property. And so Anna, she pulls out her phone and she's calling the police. And as she's calling the police, Jeff, who's totally upset that there are these people harassing him and his family and making them feel on the door. unsafe, he just grabs a flashlight and storms out the back door to go confront these people. But as soon as Jeff went out the back door he before he could even shine the light on them, the three people had turned and ran and ah, vanished. Okay. And so finally, when the police... Okay, I'm going to take it as a no, they don't have a gun. Uh, because, you know, he would have grabbed that with the flashlight or just the gun. Um, but, yeah, so I'm going to take that. ...did show up. They were aware of all the calls they had gotten from this family. And so they went out there and they did a serious search for these three strangers. But, like always, nothing was found. And so the family once again was told... 
If you see anything else, let us know. The following month, which was August, Anna was home with her daughter along with her mother who was upstairs. And as Anna is in the front of the house in the playroom with her daughter, she hears the sound of somebody trying to open that back sliding door. And now immediately her radar is up because she knows what happened the last time she heard the sound. I don't get it. I don't get this this uh, criminal's plan of attack. Like, y- you are known to the family. They they know to look out for you. So that's already a mistake you've made. You're meant to be kind of inconspicuous and, you know, element of surprise-esque. So if you're just standing there creeping them out, and then as soon as, you know, you try to get in and then they come out, you run away? Like, what is your... What's your motive? What's your plan of attack? Why are you... What's the point? Like, is it like a slow build up to instill fear in them? Like, I don't know. If I was a criminal, this is not how I'd go about, you know, robbing or murdering. Now, <laughs> sounds so normal. I'm not, but you know, if I was. Where's that person in the window? But mm. she's thinking, okay, I can't just immediately call the police. I need to at least look and see if. The- oh, okay. These aren't. I think this is. I think Mr. Bolin's on like a wooden creaky floor because they're not footstep sound effects listen to those creaks again i thought they were footstep sound effects but i think it's just him but doing his facial movements and his expressions <laughs> she's thinking okay i can't just immediately call the police i need creak, to at least look creak, and creak. see if there's someone that i know at the back door hmm. so she scoops her daughter up she stands up and she scoops walks around up. to the edge of the room she's in and she kind of peeks her head down this hallway that will give her a clear view mm-hmm. of this backsliding glass door and once she finally has a full view of whoever is there she screams because there are two large adults as she would say standing at the back door trying to force open this door and so when she screams these two strangers they hear it they turn around and they run and melinda she was upstairs she hears her daughter screaming she comes flying downstairs she's trying to figure out what's going on anna is hysterical the baby's crying and so melinda actually calls the police about what her daughter has just seen the police come out they search the property they can't find anyone okay so that that immediately tells me like they are trying not to be seen but they're going about it a really weird way like if there is a baby there is always going to be someone home so i don't think going into this house uh at any point in this current situation where there's a baby and you know a lot of people living there at least if you count the baby that's five people so there's always going to be someone home so if you're trying to not be seen jiggling the door and like looking through the windows it's not really smart but and the police leave and they tell the family look you know i'm sorry this is happening to you but we can't do anything so let us know if we can help let us know if anything Anything else happens happens. we'll be out here as soon as we can you know we're bound to catch these people but you know right now and uh, again that's what the family's been doing like letting them know when things are coming up and happening in their house or around their house like but the cops you know if they can't catch them on the spot or in the act then you know, not really much. At least send out a patrol vehicle to scan the perimeter, but nothing really else from there. We just don't have much to operate on. The following month, which was September, one of Melinda's car keys would go missing. And whoever had Oof. these keys, whoever had stolen these keys, would use it to randomly start Melinda's car in the middle of the night. And they also used it to set off her car alarm at odd hours of the night. And then also during this time frame that her keys were missing, they also discovered that there were nails jammed into the tires of Bruce's car. And so, of course, you know, the okay, fa- again, that is instilling fear. I think now that I'm getting a clearer picture and having more information given to me, I feel like this group or trio maybe maybe four maybe five even are just trying to instill fear over a long period of time because that can mess with your psychology like psychologically that can make you crazy if you if you're in constant paranoia if you're you feel like you're in constant danger and you're just always fearful for your life and there is a baby so you'll be more on edge to protect that as well as yourself if this happens over time then you know it's gonna drive you insane and I think that's what they're doing because they haven't, they've looked in and they've jiggled the door and they've uh, put nails in and, you know, starting it in the middle of the night. They're not stealing it. They just, you know, start, the, it's almost a sick prank. So calls the police and mm. tells them about what's going on, but the police can't do anything. And so very frustrated, Melinda actually takes to Facebook and posts that someone's stolen her keys and please just give them back. And just overall, she's mm. pleading with whoever is Don't harassing her that. family to just leave them alone. But unfortunately, this post would not do anything. The harassment would continue. A month later, on October 19th, Jeff was home alone when he heard the sound of the backsliding glass door rattling and 
now he knows that every time this has been heard by Anna, that there's always some stranger at the back door. And so Jeff grabs the family dog and he very carefully turns. I was going to ask if they had a dog, like a guide dog. Uh, not a guide. <laughs> Sorry, one guy reacts. Um, a guard dog. I was wondering if they had like a, because if they had a big German shepherd or a Great Dane or a husky, right? Boom. Set that off. They won't come back. <laughs> looks down that hallway towards the back door to see who this is and right as he pokes his head out he sees there's this large adult figure with a hood up trying mm. to open this back door and so the dog sees this person and starts barking and running towards the door <laughs> jeff runs after the dog and this big person outside is trying to break in he sees the dog he sees jeff running and he turns and he runs away oh, so jeff wow. and the dog they uh, stay inside the house yeah, and they maybe. watch this guy just take off across the property and disappear into the trees and jeff would call the police but like always the police came out and there just was nothing they could do uh, Four bro let the dog loose you can't you won't outrun a dog <laughs> four days later on october 23rd on what jeff <laughs> along with his young daughter and bruce they went to the local applebee's where anna worked to have dinner there and have anna wait on them and then after they were done eating they said their goodbyes to anna they left the restaurant they hopped in their cars and they drove back to their house mm, has something happened while they were gone because this is probably what the intruders were waiting for when they got there bruce was the first up the steps and he got to the front door and it was locked and so he knocked and kyle oh god that sounds like literally in my room god that's a really good sound effect especially to prank people in like a discord call this was the first up the steps and he got to the front door and it was locked and so he knocked and kyle his son he came and unlocked the door bruce went inside followed closely behind by jeff who was holding his daughter hold they on let me hear how he described that noticed he that the door was locked did they not lock it themselves got to the front door and it was locked and so okay, he knocked. Never mind. No, no never mind it was locked obviously never mind and kyle Ignore. his son he came and unlocked the door bruce went inside okay, so followed kyle was closely home. behind by jeff who was holding his daughter okay 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 i got it i got it i got it kyle was home they get inside and bruce walks through the house to the back of the house where the kitchen is he flips on the lights and there's something on the kitchen floor and when jeff sees it he immediately turns around and runs out of the house carrying his daughter he grabs kyle along the way and just takes them what straight out of the house uh -huh. and then once jeff was outside he called 911 and when you listen to his 911 call it sounds Ooh, like goody i love it when in true crime they have legit like footage either from the 911 call or from the the intruder or the serial killer what have you it just makes it way more real like jeff is unable to process what he has just seen 911 what's the address of your emergency uh, somebody somebody's been attacked in my house somebody's been what oh my god he sounds petrified Ugh, anxiety warning <laughs> attacked they attacked who? Who was attacked? Uh, uh, Mel Pleskovic. Mel Pleskovic was attacked. He was attacked by whom? Do you oh, know? no, 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 not Mel. No, everyone loves Mel. Oh, I'm not going to cry. No, I don't. Mm. She, she was, no, we, we just came home. She's on the kitchen floor. Jeff and Bruce had just discovered Melinda lying on the kitchen floor. She'd been stabbed over 35 times and shot three times. She would be rushed to the hospital, but she she's would die dead. that yeah, night. Although no, the there's no way she's surviving that and just being left on the floor oh no man i literally said please don't die melinda at the start emily was in shock and couldn't even begin to process what had just happened they were all acutely aware that whoever had done this to melinda had to be connected to all of these strange and suspicious people that had been lurking around their property for the better part of two years in fact literally after jeff had called 911 bruce was inside in the kitchen kneeling next to his dying wife and he called 911 and he would tell the dispatcher that the strongsville police department really dropped the ball 911 what city oh god that was in my right ear i didn't like that <laughs> It's in my right ear only. Dispatcher that the Strongsville Is Police the Department really be dropped in my left? the ball. 911, what city is the emergency in? Please come to one yep. for Blazing Star. I think my wife's dead. Someone, tell me, we've tell had me people to... breaking into our fucking house. Sir. And now someone fucking killed her. Sir, tell me the city you need to talk to. Strongsville, Ohio. Okay, you need to be transferred. Don't hang up. Oh, man. 911, what's the city of your emergency? Strongsville, Ohio. We have people on the way already. What's the address? Four Blazing Star. I think someone killed my wife. You think someone killed your wife? Yeah, there, it looks like okay, she has stab on her back. We've had okay. people trying to break into sir, our house sir, all year. Sir, stealing I sir, 
I need to ask you questions, okay? Are you there right now? I just got in the door with my new son-in-law. My son Kyle was here Okay, what, her. sir, what I want you to do is walk outside. The Strongsville Police Department would come out in force for this case, and they would solve it in just four days. And when they went public with who killed Melinda, no one could believe it. Back on October... Yeah, because she was so loved in the community and just in general. 23rd, so this was the night Melinda was discovered. Jeff, along with his young daughter and Melinda and her son Kyle, they were all together in the house. And at some point, Jeff had I put his... Again. Apologies if you Kyle. can hear that. They were all together in the house. And at some point... You'd think they'd have the decency to realize I was recording, but... We move. Jeff had put his daughter down in her playpen and then went into the kitchen where Melinda was and he walked up to her, pulled out a knife and stabbed her over 35 times. And then when Melinda fell to the ground, Jeff drew a gun and shot her three additional times to make sure she was dead. Now, while... Uh, I'm not going to pretend like... Okay, when he was on the phone, he didn't sound remorseful it wasn't like he, he wasn't he didn't sound sad it was more angry i'm not gonna say like oh i knew this happened but i had a hunch that i didn't mention i don't know he sounded like not that upset almost while he was doing this his daughter is literally just a few feet away and kyle presumably is also right nearby but he has no way of understanding what's happening oh i should have said so i can't mm, i didn't know but i had a hunch that he was responsible to his mother and so with these two totally innocent lives just right nearby jeff would clean off his weapons and he'd take off his bloody clothes and he would hide them inside of his car and then he would just scoop up his daughter and he would leave the house leaving Kyle alone in the house with his dying mother in the kitchen, just leaves him there, shuts the door, locks it, and then Jeff and... So this is, um... What's her name? M Mia? My Maya? What? The, 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 the daughter's name. Melinda's daughter's uh, hubby. His daughter would drive to Applebee's to have dinner with Melinda's husband and her daughter. And then after several hours, when they got <laughs> back to the property, Jeff knew what was waiting for them inside, and he still allowed Bruce to go inside first and discover his dying wife on the kitchen floor. Very little is known about why Jeff did this, because Jeff has actually never come out and given his motive for the crime. So was he connected to the people who were, like... S surveying the house and like trying to creep them out was he like connected to them at all did he know them the running theory is that jeff actually was not going to be able to pay for the wedding which was coming up in a couple of days and the wedding venue had actually contacted melinda and said hey you know we're canceling the wedding because your future son-in-law can't pay for it and so melinda apparently confronted jeff about his financial troubles and mm. the theory is he snapped and killed her However, that can't possibly be the entire story for why he did this. Because mm. it would turn out Jeff was found to be responsible for literally every single suspicious event that had taken place around the Pleskovic property leading up to the attack. Meaning every time they had seen strangers lurking around their property or people trying to break into their house, that had been because of Jeff. Either it was literally Jeff outside being one of these suspicious people, or he had asked friends or hired someone or groups of oh people to God, pretend to why? be suspicious people on the property, or Jeff had been the only person to see these suspicious people, and then miraculously, when other people attempted to look outside, you know, they were gone. And so obviously Jeff was lying. And so... I don't... Wh why? What? So I actually why? had the opportunity to speak with one of Jeff's childhood friends oh, man. who was actually living roughly in the Strongsville area when this horrible murder took place. And what this person told me is that what is kind of generally accepted as why Jeff did this, according to the people in Strongsville, is that Jeff apparently loathed Melinda. Even though she had opened her house to him, he loathed her. And as soon as he why? moved in in 2016, why? he began plotting to kill her. And so all of these 
suspicious events were Jeff's attempt at building this really intricate alibi that they had oh, these strangers out God. there that were targeting this family. And so that when she would ultimately be killed by him, it would look like these strangers had done it. And at first, it totally worked. Everybody believed, the police, the family, friends, that strangers had broken into the house and killed Melinda. In fact, there was so little suspicion on Jeff after her murder that Jeff actually served as a pallbearer in Melinda's funeral. But ultimately, the police would discover Oof. the knife and some... Sorry, blood. I got the the uh, daughter's husband, well, partner, Jeff, and the father of... Uh, the the husband of oh my god it's so confusing Melinda's son-in-law did this and I got it confused with the husband but yeah it is the son-in-law because I th I think the uh, husband of Melinda called the police on that thing and so you know I th it sounded weird from him but it was the son-in-law so clothes in the it's back crazy. of Jeff's yeah. car and so they would arrest him and they would present this mountain of evidence against him and Jeff would confess to killing Melinda. However, Jesus. he wouldn't give any additional information about the crime. He would just basically say, yes, I did kill her. He would also never give an apology or explanation to the family. He would ultimately be sentenced to life in prison with the opportunity for parole after 33 years. During Jeff's Yikes. trial, there was this totally heartbreaking moment when Bruce, Melinda's husband, spoke. And mm. he would say their son, Kyle, does not understand that his mother is gone. And so now, every time they go out to eat, which is something Kyle really likes to do and he used to love doing with his mother, he'll just say, sit and stare out the window eagerly expecting his mother to show up any minute oh, but of course man. she never does so that's going to do it guys if you got something out of today's episode and you haven't done this that's already awful. please offer to curl the like buttons hair for their wedding but then repeatedly touch the top of their ear with the curling iron also please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly one or two video uh, uploads we are now selling merchandise like flannels awful. and hats I, and sweatshirts wow, and all sorts of I stuff can't. if you're interested go to shop Mr. I should have known that Melinda would have been the victim from the start. Com. If you want to learn about upcoming deals and promotions for our shop, go to our shop's Instagram page. The username is just shop Mr. Ballin. If you want to get in touch with me, mm. you can direct message me on Instagram or on Twitter. My username for both platforms is the same. It's just Mr. Ballin. Well, that was that. Uh, I think it was uh, the person in this photo has an evil secret. I think <laughs> was the title. That was crazy. Sorry, I messed up the um, the, confusing the husband with the son-in-law. Uh, I don't know. I, it, it was confusing remembering all the names, but that was insane. I can't believe all of that. Pretty much was made up by this bloke. It seemed so. It, it didn't seem. I don't. Why would he loathe Melinda? It doesn't make sense. But again, financial struggle. But to kill someone in front of. Her son and your own daughter. I I don't know, man. That's that's crazy. Uh, leave a like though if you enjoyed this video because it helps me more than you know. And subscribe if you enjoyed this reaction because we react to every single Mr. Ballin video that comes out from now. And I'm gonna probably be diving into some older ones of his that I have not reacted to. And everything I react to is a first time reaction, uh, so it's genuine. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you've made it this far, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at chyznz and join the Discord. All links to those three are in the description below. Uh, comment your thoughts and if you have a particular Mr. Ballin video you'd like me to react to drop it in the comment section below because I do read every single comment no okay <laughs> I've been Chase of Blango thank you very much for watching I'll see myself out